For nearly six decades, Berkshire Hathaway's chief executive officer Warren Buffett has been running circles around Wall Street's flagship index, which is the S&P 500. Since taking the reins as chief executive officer, the aptly dubbed Oracle of Omaha has overseen an aggregate return in his company's Class A shares of 4,927,141% as of the closing bell on March 8th. That compares to a total return, including dividends paid, of around 33,500% for the Standard and Poor's 500 over the same period. Riding Warren Buffett's coattails has been a money-making strategy for decades, which is made all the easier thanks to Form 13F filings with the Securities and Exchange Commission. A 13F provides a snapshot of what Wall Street's smartest and most successful investors are buying and selling, and is a required quarterly filing for money managers overseeing at least $100 million in assets under management. Although most investors are are intrigued to see what the Oracle of Omaha and his investment aides have been buying, understanding why Buffett and his team are selling certain stocks can be extremely insightful. Based on the most recent 13F, Warren Buffett and his team are selling seven stocks. The first sizable holding that found itself on the chopping block during the December ended quarter is media company Paramount Global, ticker symbol P-A-R-A. Buffett's company pared down nearly a third of its position, which had stood at north of 93 million shares. The catalyst for dumping more than 30 million shares looks to be Paramount Global's undesirable balance sheet. More specifically, the company is lugging around $14 billion, $600 million in long-term debt compared to just $2 billion, $460 million in cash and cash equivalents as of the end of 2023. With cord cutting ongoing and Paramount's streaming segment still losing money, investors, including Buffett, have begun to lose patience. The other side of the coin is that Paramount Global's streaming segment losses are lessening thanks to higher subscription prices being passed along to users. Further, legacy media companies tend to enjoy a resurgence in ad spending during major election years. Although Paramount Global has concerns to address, things may not be as dire as its poor stock performance would suggest. Another high-profile name that took a big haircut in Berkshire Hathaway's investment portfolio during the fourth quarter is personal computing and printing services provider HP, ticker symbol HPQ. Buffett and his aides dumped close to 78% of Berkshire's stake compared to what was held on September 30th, 2023. The impetus behind this selling activity may have to do with the sluggishness of personal computer sales. Though personal computer sales surged during the initial stages of the COVID-19 pandemic, they've meaningfully retreated with most employees returning to the office. With no sales growth forecast for the current year, HP's 3.6% dividend yield simply isn't enough of a lure to keep Buffett and his team interested. HP also looks like a perfect example of a fair company at a wonderful price that Buffett would prefer to avoid. Although HP stock can be purchased for a mere eight times forward year earnings, the company's growth days are long gone. Now reliant on relatively low margin products and printing services, HP lacks the needle-moving results that the brightest investors desire. Perhaps the most surprising selling activity during the fourth quarter was the roughly 10 million shares Buffett and his investment team sold in the technology stock named Apple, ticker symbol AAPL. Keep in mind that selling 10 million shares only reduced Berkshire's stake in its top holding by 1.1%. Chances are the Oracle of Omaha hasn't changed his tune on what he previously referred to as a better business than any we own. Apple's physical product innovation has led the way for more than a decade, with the company now also emphasizing high margin subscription services. To boot, Apple has repurchased $650 billion of its own common stock since the start of 2013. The most logical reason Buffett and his investing crew pared down their Apple stake is to offset realized investment losses from Paramount Global and HP. Buffett's company is sitting on an estimated $119 billion in unrealized gains on its Apple stock, a popular holding that was given the heave-ho from Berkshire's investment portfolio during the December-ended quarter is insurance and investment company Markel Group, ticker symbol MKL, which has been dubbed something of a mini-Berkshire given its penchant 
before making investments. Buffett and his team dumped their entire position in Markel, which had been a continuous holding since the first quarter of 2022. There are two educated guesses as to why Markel found itself on the chopping block. The likeliest answer is valuation. Since 2015, Markel Group has traded at or below 120% of its book value on only a handful of occasions. One of those instances was during the first quarter of 2022. With Markel's premium to book value nearing 50% just prior to the start of October 2023, the luster of getting a deal may have worn off. The other possibility is Weschler or Combs, not Buffett, cut Markel loose. Buffett's investment aides are considerably more active on the trading front than he is, and this position was ultimately held for less than two years. Next up, we have the Brazil-focused fintech company Stoneco, ticker symbol STNE, which had been a five-year holding in Berkshire's portfolio, was also shown the door during the fourth quarter. The motivation for Buffett and his team to part ways with Stoneco probably had to do with the company's debt-driven challenges. Brazil's central bank raised interest rates to as high as 13.75% in 2022 to get the country's inflation rate under control. Unfortunately, Stoneco's loan division was backed by debt, which sent its servicing costs soaring. Even though management has addressed these issues, Stoneco is still something of a work in progress. On the other hand, Stoneco has its fingers in far more than just payments in Brazil's economy. It offers banking and credit solutions, as well as software to micro, small, and medium-sized businesses. Although add-on service adoption is climbing, Stoneco has penetrated just a small fraction of the fintech market in Brazil. The sixth stock Buffett and his team kicked to the curb during the December-ended quarter was a long-time holding Globe Life, ticker symbol GL. Prior to its departure, Globe Life had been a continuous holding in Berkshire Hathaway's investment portfolio for more than two decades. Shares of the company more than doubled following the COVID-19 crash, sending its price-to-book value to nearly 300% during the fourth quarter. At no point during the 22 years that Berkshire held shares of Globe Life did it sustain a book value of more than 200% for any length of time, let alone near 300%. Buffett and his team are also known for concentrating their investments in their top ideas. For instance, Globe Life never met the definition of a core holding, which ultimately sealed its fate. Last but not least, the Oracle of Omaha and his team booted home builder D.R. Horton, ticker symbol DHI, from the investment portfolio during the December ended quarter. This is one of the biggest head scratchers of all, considering shares of D.R. Horton were only acquired during the June ended quarter. Since Warren Buffett is a firm believer in holding wonderful businesses for extended periods, the purchase and subsequent sale of D.R. Horton suggests that either Ted Weschler or Todd Combs were the masterminds behind this relatively quick trade instead of Buffett. History may also have played a role in dumping shares of D.R. Horton. Home builders aren't known for delivering outsized investment returns. Depending on the entry and exit, it could have been up north of 50%, which is an incredible gain for a traditionally slow-moving industry. With various money-based metrics and predictive indicators alluding to a possible recession in 2024, locking in gains may have been the best option. 